Hello, this is Crystal Meach with Dow of the Heart, and today I have Donald Patak. Is that Close how you say it? Patak, Patak. I'm good with it. Okay. And um, yeah, so tell us a little bit about astrology and how you got into it. Astrology. Astrology. Okay. First of all, I have a bachelor's degree in history and librarianship, so I dig into stuff. Astro meaning stars, and ology is the study of, so it's the study of the stars is what it is. And um, like everybody else, I got introduced to newspaper astrology, so I was familiar with that. Um, back around 2017-ish, I you know 2016-2017, I had run into a rough patch in my life, and I was taking up meditation to help me deal with it and learn and how to handle it. And uh, I was I took a meditation class from a local uh, teacher, uh, Susie, now known as Susie Wu. Um, and she wanted to know my astrological information because according to her, you know, knowing the astrological information tells her how to teach me best, which, like, okay, I'm a Gemini, big deal. What's that going to tell you? No, I want your birth information, all the stuff we need to create the actual chart. And then off of that, I can learn how to best teach you. So she pulled it up and she showed me everything. It's like, this is, there's a lot more here than just this newspaper stuff. It's like, Oh yeah, all the planets mean different things. And so she gave me my introduction to it and I did get a full birth chart reading from her and she reads tropical. And so she gave me the, reading. Wait, wait, like, okay, what, what, what is tropical? What tropical astrology? There's two major schools okay. of, tro of astrology, tropical versus okay. sidereal. Tropical astrology fixes the signs to seasons. So when we are coming up on uh, the uh, spring equinox, in tropical astrology, they will say that it's at Aries um, zero degrees. It will always be at Aries zero degrees. So the signs are fixed to seasons. So Spring equinox, we're always going to be at Aries zero. Summer, the summer solstice, we're always going to be, I believe, in Cancer. The autumnal equinox, autumn, we're always going to be in, I believe it's Libra. And the winter solstice, we're always going to be in, I think it's Capricorn. Yeah, I believe it's Capricorn. I'm just trying to get rip that off the top of my head. Um, sure. what I practice, sidereal astrology, also known as visible sky astrology, uh, we're, it's like what the ancients did. They went before Ptolemy created tropical astrology, they would wake up in the morning, they would look at the horizon and see what sign was rising and then plant, plan everything out from that. So, um, in sidereal astrology on the spring equinox, we will see the sign of Pisces rising which is also where we get our astrological ages. So when you hear people say we're in the age of Pisces, that's where they're getting it from. The sign that's on the horizon when the sun, when the sun rises on the spring equinox, what sign is that in? That's the ascendant. That's the sign we're in. And that's the age we're in. So that's, um, so that's why we're in the age of Pisces moving towards the age of Aquarius. So, in the 2100s, I don't have that date memorized off the top of my head yet, uh, we'll be in the age of Aquarius. So uh, she read it, she read me my chart in tropical, and I was like, okay, this is interesting. Some things seem okay, some things seem a little off, but I started my, that, that was the beginning of my journey, and I started uh, taking some courses and learning about different different forms, you know, learning about astrology so I could actually like read my own chart and what have you. Um, mm -hmm. And I was on the internet and on my wonderful, you know, the wonderful Instagram app and an ad came up talking about 13 sign true sidereal astrology. I'm like, what? Like, okay, this is really out there. And anyone that knows me knows I love a rabbit hole. That's, the, that's my Gemini ascendant with Mercury and Gemini. So like me and rabbit holes, I live in them. Um, so I, want, I, I wound up actually doing a, little, doing a little digging, a little research. And I was like, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. And let me, I actually got the book right here because I'm in my office. 
is called The Lost Zodiac. We probably can't see the title there, but there we go. The Lost Zodiac by Catherine Tennant. She mentions, let me pull this up real quick. She says, and it says, the Fucus, the serpent bearer, December uh, December 6th or 7th through the 7th, excuse me, through the 17th. It says, where was it? Is the 13th traditional zodiac sign. So in ancient times, there was a 13th sign. And so I got curious about this. I was like, okay, I want to learn more about this. I got the book and some other resources. There's some other re information I found out about it. And I began digging into that. And then there was that, they said sidereal. And I was like, okay, what's sidereal and what's the difference? And I found an astrologer who read my chart that way. And I began looking at things like, okay, this is making real sense here. Um, when I was working with some tropical astrologers, they'd look at my chart and I'd say, and they'd be looking and they'd say all things. I was like, well, I work as a librarian. And then they look at my chart and they say, hmm, oh, and they pull stuff out. And I was in a study group with a bunch of sidereal uh, astrologers, and I hadn't said anything. They were just looking at my chart. And the one astrologer is looking and goes, you have, and pointed out a bunch of things like, you know what? A good career would uh, for you would be a librarian. And I burst out laughing. The moderator burst out laughing because this was the person who read the chart, because that's what I was doing for a living. It's like, I am wow. a librarian. <laughs> so, <laughs> scenario astrology or visible sky, sky astrology, we're looking at where the planets are in the sky right now. Um, if I actually had clear sky at dusk when after uh, when sun is setting, I can look out and I can see Jupiter and Aries. We're being told he's out in Taurus. So, the difference between the two systems right now is approximately 25 degrees. Tropical is ahead by 25 degrees. So, I am looking, and like I said, I'm a history major. I'm looking going back to the way it was practiced before tropical astrology was started. And um, there are people that resonate with tropical. That's good. There are people that that I'm running into are saying, I'm being told I am a, but it just doesn't feel right. And I pull out, I was, I was actually at a health fair and I you know, had a person come up and said, I keep getting told I'm a Sagittarius and I just don't feel like a Sagittarius. And I created their chart and I said, the reason you're not a, that you don't resonate with Sagittarius is because in the visible sky, you're a Scorpio. And I just laid, I just explained a few things and I looked and her eyes were like this big Scorpio. You can tell Scorpio in 10 size. <laughs> they got a good score. They've got strong Scorpio energy and her eyes are like wide open. And she's like, tell me more, give me. And so you know, there are people that they've, they, they don't feel connected to, with tropical because it's so popular. They go with it. Sidereal astrology is a more ancient form, and people, and there are people who resonate with it much, much more, and they find it um, more. In li they find themselves and find it more in line with themselves, and they find they learn. They feel like they're learning more about who they are, why they're here, and what have you. So, that's that's my little spiel there. Sorry. <laughs> Wow. I mean, that's amazing. And um, just as you were saying that, I just thought of like biblically, and I know a lot of people think of the Bible as not being astrological, but I can tell you different from studying Neville Goddard. Um, oh, the first sign in the Bible, astrological sign mentioned in the Bible is a fucus. And that's the 13th sign. Um, really? You know, Genesis. Genesis 3, book of Genesis, Genesis three. 3, you have the fall, yeah, you have the fall of man, you know, the, the infamous fall, Adam and Eve, set, or actually her name is Hava in Hebrew, so it's Adam and Hava sit down and they've chewed on, they've, they've, they've bitten into the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and the Lord okay. comes down and says, hey, you done, God, you, did, you did bad, and I'm now going to pronounce judgment on you. And he pronounces judgment on Adam. He pronounces the judgment on Hava or Eve. And then he says to the snake, you will forever strike at his heel and he will crush your head. And if you look at the symbol for a fucus, it's a man holding a snake. You know, snake in ancient times symbolized knowledge. So it was a man holding a snake by the head and the tail. His Weft foot, I believe it is, is in the zodiac belt. 
Scorpio, in very ancient astrological uh, uh, systems, was actually a snake. So you have the snake striking into his heel, but his other foot is stepping down on Scorpio. And so that's what the symbol is. So you can see that here, here the scorpion is striking into his heel, but the other foot is going to come down and crush on, crush on Scorpio. So it's, yeah, it's, yeah, the Bible and astrology, little, little dirty, not dirty uh, uh, piece of history. But um, prior to St. Augustine, Christianity, Judaism, you know, actually in Judaism now, I, I've talked to a few uh, Jews, they have no problem with astrology because their, their calendar is astrologically based, um, especially the, the very conservative and the Hasidim. Um, prior to the sacking of Rome and St. Augustine, you're using astrology, the church didn't care. After Rome was sacked in the early 400s, Augustine had to blame someone. Couldn't blame the leadership, which at that time was, and I, I hate to bash the Catholic Church, and I'm not doing this. I'm just saying this is what had happened. At that time, Christianity was in charge of Rome, and the leadership was all Christian, and they had just suffered this inglorious military defeat. Not only did the barbarians beat them up in Germany, but they marched all the way from that Germanic border all the way down into Italy, into the capital, sacked the capital, and walked off. He had to blame someone. Who do you blame? I blame the astrologers. And at that point, the Catholic Church banned astrology. Eventually, it allowed it back in and a specific type and a specific form. These are the rules that you can do astrology by. And that's my current understanding. I did read that in a book. I don't have it here. I've got, okay, I'm a librarian. My, my house could be a library. I've got books here. There. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, and the, the astrological symbolism that's in the Bible, um, when Paul was being taken to Rome, the one ship that he went on, they had Castor and Pollux as the figurehead on the ship. Castor and Pollux, Gemini. Ooh, interesting. Last Supper. Last Supper. Um, and if you read it, he tells two of his disciples to go into town and you will see a man carrying a jug of water. Follow him. Man carrying a jug of water? Men in the Middle East don't carry water. That's women's work. Man carrying a jug of water, the symbol of Aquarius. Freedom, individuality. Follow him. <laughs> Little historical tidbit there too. <laughs> I would yeah, do great at in large crowds. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah and symbolism. I agree with you completely. Yeah, and um, it's like gonna say so the birth of Christ, and that's Virgo. It's the Virgo. It's, mm -hmm. He was um, born. Yeah, the, the so, joining of the yeah the stars, the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. It was is what the ancients used as a. Uh, I know I'm cutting you off there a little bit, but yeah, that's what okay. we symbolize the king, is they would look and they would see the birth of Jupiter and Saturn, and then they would look to see the house that it's in, or the sign or what the astrological sign that it was in. And that would tell them where to go look and find this king to celebrate. Uh, interestingly, they knew that it was the house of Judah. The symbol of Judah is a lion. Jesus was not born in December. He was born during the time of Leo. <laughs> Which would have been so Interesting. The other little, uh, the other little astro astronomical fact this is astronomy dictating this. The only way you could see that union of Jupiter and Saturn is if in, in the night sky they're above the horizon. That does not happen. Um, that particular conjunction they've known from they knew from from doing the uh, history and what have you. The only time that would have been visible is in summertime. Hmm. So, but yeah, interesting. <laughs> 
<laughs> Back to our original question before we went on this tangent. Um, I was studying with Cassandra Joan Butler. I was taking, because uh, I wanted to do this as a career. I was like, I really enjoy this. I want to get more into this. Cassandra Joan Butler is a local astrologer who's internationally known, published, and she was offering a class and I was taking the class with her. And on the last day of the, of the birth chart class, you know, I was pointing things out. She was done. You are pointing out, you, you, you've consistently pointed out certain things and made comments on them. You need to look into evolutionary astrology. Because I was looking for just for general, being a general astrologer. And something inside of me, like bullhorn, look into this. And, um, you know, when spirit knocks and spirits, you know, it's good to listen. So I looked. So yep. she gave me names to look up. And, again, avoiding the light. I decided to work with uh, Stephen Forrest and uh, The Inner Sky. This is his, his book on the birth chart and how to read birth chart. And what evolutionary astrology teaches and what I really like about it is um, the, the astrology as I was studying it was fatalistic. This is going to happen to you. You have no control. Evolutionary astrology is uh, two principles that I really resonate with me. Number one, your birth chart is not who you are. It's a map right. of the lessons you came here to, to learn. So it's who you are. Who you, it's, it's your end zone. It's the end line. This is this is your end line. This is how you win the game. And secondly, you have freedom of choice. Each planet, each constellation, each sign. There's a healthy expression and an unhealthy, or a skilled or an unskilled. So you can choose the high road or the low road. My kittens are choosing the high road right now. They're all sleeping on the chair on top of the cushions. <laughs> but you you have freedom of choice. So. Um, like for right now, we have uh, Saturn and Jupiter in, our, in a sex house. Jupiter is how you dream. Saturn is how you get things done, just to keep it very simple. So oh. what are you dreaming about? What are your, what are your hopes? What is, what, is, what is something you really, really want to accomplish? Is it authentic to you? And how are you going to do it? What work is it going to take? So these are kind of the two old men of the solar system wanting to work together to help you dream up a dream that can be done and then help you to do the work to make it a reality. So that's well, the high road. Yeah, that's the high road. The low road, the low road Jupiter is all talk, no walk. Or refusing to dream at all, or saying, "Oh, that's a nice idea, but I could never do that." No, 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 don't. No. And Saturn, uh, Saturn can just fall into the shadow of Saturn uh, is bitterness, negativity, a sense of impossibility, crushing weight. Oh God, you know, Saturn. You know, Saturn can be um, the shadow of Saturn can be very soul crushing. To be kind. So that's the shadow of it. So the question that, you know, like, when I do my readings, like, what's a hope? What's a dream you have? Dream big, shoot big, because Jupiter right now, visible sky is in Aries. Dream big. Saturn right now is in Aquarius. So he wants to do the work of helping you become your authentic self. So Jupiter was this big dream. Is this authentic to me? Yeah, let's do it and let's make this thing real. And Saturn as a, as a teacher, if you do the work, he rewards you generously. So he is that he's that you know, and he's got a rep a, a bad reputation unfortunately as being a strict taskmaster, but when you know, like he's that hard teacher that you know at the end you know you you've got I went to college so we've had these professors that are hard nosed just everybody hates, but I had one professor say if you don't get a B or an A in my class I don't write letters of recommendation. And uh, this guy was hard he was a history teacher he was a very challenging if you weren't pulling your weight he told you. But when you got done, when I got done with his courses and I said, hey, I'm going for a master's degree and I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to be a life, I'm going to teaching and school librarianship. He looked at me and goes, I'll write that letter. And he wrote me an amazing letter of recommendation. He was a hard teacher. He pushed me. He challenged me. When he, I was not doing my, what he thought was my best work, he had no problems telling me. And I had great respect for him. Saturn, Saturn is, you know, is, is that. Hard driving taskmaster that you respect because his goals is to help you be the best you can be. And that's what he wants. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I just love about, you know, what I love about astrology is that 
you know, whatever is in your chart, you know, when you do a reading, it's, it's how you feel about that reading. Like what, what comes up? Like mm -hmm. when you tell me, so yeah, maybe you could. Really interesting. <laughs> yeah. And, um, like you gave me a little taste before yeah. this, um, before this. And I was just like, well, first of all, I love that it was recorded and that you had the notes there so that I could go back. And, um, it was just amazing what came through, like when you did the reading, like, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. And then yeah. what does that create from me, from you bringing that up, I guess? Yeah. Um, when I create a birth chart, like I said, the birth chart is, this is who you came here to become. So ideally when I'm looking at it, I'm trying to create, I'm, the picture that I'm trying to create or the picture I'm working to create is the best version of you at the end of your life. You're sitting back, it's time to go, it's time to go return to spirit and you're looking back and it's like, yeah, I aced this. So um, what I did for you was called the quick six reading. Um, and for people who are curious, like, how would my chart change? Um, this is a quick reading I can do. It's about 15 to 20 minutes long, usually, depending on depending on things, what, what comes up. Uh, but I look at six, what I call six key points in the chart. And it, um, let's see, it's the sun, which is your ego. And I tell people, you came here to have a healthy ego. Because your ego is your personality. So you, whatever your sun sign is, look at the healthy expression of that. You came to learn how to how to be that because we're human beings you came here to be a healthy you're a leo you came here to be a healthy leo what's a healthy leo and i explain those things leo wants appreciation leo leo feels like they, we've done this work tell me did you like it what was good about it so i do talk about the sun because that's your ego and you came here to have a healthy ego i um i talk about the moon which is your soul it's also your emotions how do you heal and, and, and your feelings. Um, then I talk about the ascendant, which is the mask that you present to the world and also how people perceive you. And if I remember correctly, you are a Sagittarius there. Uh, Sagittarius, learning trust, getting out, going there, taking risks. Um, also, Sagittarius can be higher knowledge, higher learning. Uh, the curious explorer, if you're looking to see, um, you know, Person wants to get up, go out and explore the world. Gemini is head knowledge. Sit down in the library, read about California. The Sagittarius wants to go to California and actually explore it. So that's kind of the, the polarity there. But the Sagittarius, uh, curious, get up there, go out, explore, learn new things. Break up the familiar. We've always driven this way to work. How many different ways can we really drive to work? It's mm -hmm. Thursday. We all have pizza. How many different types of pizza can we have? It's not just cheese and pepperoni. Mm -hmm. There's so we're a Sagittarius. Literally, Sagittarius is the spice of life. Um, they wanting to find all these different ways of doing things because there's more than one way to do something. Sagittarius is going to be the one to figure it out. Um, and then the planet that rules the ascendant, which I. Right now, I'm reading it as a uh, theme of your life. And the ruler of Sagittarius is a theme of your life, theme of your chart. Uh, ruler of Sagittarius, I said, was Jupiter. Dream big. Dream big. What are your gifts? Look at them. And know that you came here to learn how to use them and go big. Um, and I, like I say, I always share the, uh, like the high road and the low road. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. But I'll focus on the high road for now. But, you know, dream big. Say, Jupiter, don't, you know, underestimating yourself is a bad thing to do. You know, like, what is your gift of the gods? You're here to develop it. And if I were to look at your chart, and we, actually, I think I did show you on your chart where Jupiter was. There's actually a lot around it. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing uh, little collection of planets that you have there. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. you look at that, and it tells you, and it gives you even more information. But kind of the theme for you is what are your gifts? Develop them, use them. 
because that's what you're and, and you have that act Jupiter actually shows up if I remember correctly in your 10th house which is what you're known for you, if you learn how to use your gifts you will be known for using them and you'll have a public reputation for being this is the go-to person and I was watching your podcasts that you have on, on YouTube and what have you and it's like yeah this is it <laughs> and they're very interesting too I do um but yeah Thank so you. let's see yeah. Yeah. um south node, yeah yeah the south node and the north node and the south node real quick is how you hold yourself back and the north node is how you get out of that if any time a chart points out a problem it tells you what the problem is but it also is telling you the solution so i think we touched on that too a little bit so yeah your question you had one um so yeah this the taste of the birth chart, but that's not all you do. I mean, you, I mean, you have multiple services, right? And no. I mean, I do, um, I do birth chart readings, which I help you understand why you came here, the lessons you came here to learn, the person you came here to become. Uh, another reading that I do, got all my books here. Um, yesterday Sky, I don't know if we can see this here. There we go. Yeah, the lighting in this room is kind of, of weird, and the camera's kind of... Yesterday's Sky, okay. uh, this is the second reading I do. Uh, it's a karmic reading. If you're a person who believes in past life, you had some trauma happen to you that you're re-experiencing in this life. That book, and I'm trained, in, and, and that's a reading that I can do, is I can tell you what that trauma is, how it happened in the past. I create a story, but then we can look and say, this is how it's reappearing in this lifetime. And then how do you heal it? Because you came here to heal it. And so your chart actually tells you that. So uh, the, you, and, uh, on your chart, how, how you were wounded and then how you heal it and how you release it in this lifetime and what you need to do to avoid creating more bad karma. And then there's the transit charts. Why everybody picks up their newspaper. I want to know what's in my astral, what's my, what's my horoscope. I can look at that and actually make, you know, I I do uh, year-long themes, quarterly, monthly. I haven't worked out the, how much I would charge to do a weekly yet, but it's it's quite a bit of work, so it would probably be up a little bit. But I can look at that. And I can look at and say, um, take the chart, take the stars, say, or take the yeah, take the constellations and the planets. Look at where they are in the sky. Compare them to your birth chart and say, this is these are the lessons that you're facing right now. Here's how they can show up. Here's the high road. Here's the low road. Um, so that's that's what I do, and I do um, I do have my weekly uh, astrology forecast where I do I, I just look at the transiting to transiting planets, and I spell that out so that you're aware of like the universal lessons. But I can personalize that for people. If a person wanted to know where Saturn and Jupiter were falling in their chart right now and what areas of life, I can do that too. So I, I can do that predictive element so that you better understand what lessons you're facing. And then how you can work to have the best op best outcome for your for your personal life, because the newspapers they've got to be generic, you know. A six year old right. ca uh, we're in, yeah, sun's in Capricorn. A, a kid who is six year old in Capricorn and a ninety year old in Capricorn are getting the same newspaper astrology. It's just totally mm -hmm. different for both of them. Yeah, it should be totally different for both of them. I can, mm -hmm. I can actually personally down to sit down where you can sit down and say oh this is what i'm facing wow this makes sense mm -hmm. yeah that's so fascinating i'm just thinking of you know me as a kid with the comics it was always in the comic section but <laughs> yeah <laughs> you'd read it and you'd be like hmm. <laughs> okay <laughs> back to the comics <laughs> And sometimes it makes sense and sometimes it didn't. Um, and the, and for some people, it made the, the reason it made sense is like, like for you, you when you told me that you were a Leo, and my response was maybe. When I created your chart, if I created your chart in tropical, you were a Leo. When I created it in uh, visible, using the visible sky, it moved things back 24 to 25 degrees. You are still in Leo because Leo is such a huge constellation. Uh, when mm -hmm. I created, had my chart, created, I was in tropical Gemini. 
when we created it and using the visible sky, it bumped me back to Taurus. And everybody was like, he's a Taurus? Yeah, he lives out in the country, feels happy when he's outside, likes being around animals. Give me, you know, I was like, hey, you know, you could use the tractor to move all that firewood. I got a wheelbarrow. I'm good. I'm outside. I'm barefoot. <laughs> I'm walking around. Don't need the noise. <laughs> so it can change things in your chart. Yeah. Taurus people like being, yeah, Taurus, people of the earth. <laughs> yeah, I think of them as very steady. Like, yeah, that's, I don't that's know. the lesson here to learn to be steady to be stable find stability find peace and no matter what's going on at that time um and uh, unfortunately there's a shadow to taurus and I'll, I'll talk about this for myself is we can be very stubborn even when we're wrong and we know we're wrong we can be very stubborn very much a stick in the mud uh very <laughs> unyielding mm -hmm. Uh, can have a tendency towards being way too conservative. <laughs> but it's, it's being aware of that and then saying, okay, wait a minute. Could that be a better way? Let's try it. So your chart, yeah, so the chart can change for people. And that's one of the, that's one of the things is some things, there are things that will change because all the signs are different sizes. Virgo is huge. And almost, she's around 45 to 48 degrees, depending on who's doing the measuring. And that's a huge sign. The four largest mm -hmm. signs in the sky, Virgo, Pisces, Leo, Sagittarius, those four signs alone are 180 degrees. Or I, I did some math and I want to know how, how much it was. But those four signs are more than half the sky. Making it wow. so that's interesting. Taurus is the next largest one after that. And then you got, you got the, the much Taurus and Gemini are also decent sized, but then you get the small ones. Um, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Scorpio, and Fucus. And so those are the, those are the small, four small ones. The moon blows through all of those in a day to a day and a half versus um, right now we're in a Virgo moon that started Monday afternoon. It's going to be going on the rest of the week. <laughs> I think it's, if I remember, and I'm, I'm just going off the top of my head, I think sometime Friday, Friday to Saturday, depending on your, on your, uh, or your time zone where you are, Friday to Saturday, it finally leaves. So there's a lot of, a lot of change. And then, like I said, um, a fucus. Um, I do read the 13 signs. A fucus is the wounded healer. Where you see a fucus in your chart, it's um, where you where you have a wound that you came to learn how to heal in your life so that you can heal other people with similar wounds. And like I, I said earlier, it's the symbol of a person holding a snake. And in ancient times, the snake was a symbol of knowledge. So he's holding the snake. He's holding the head, holding this tail. So he's learned the knowledge and then how to use it. And ideally, it's being used to heal other people. We all know that there's a two-edged sword there. You can use that knowledge to cause great wounds as well. And that's the shadow of the fucus is uh, causing deeper wounding. So it's, 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 it's you know, knowledge, you know, knowledge is power. How are you using it? And that's the le big lesson of the fucus. And um, that, yeah, that archetype is, um, it's a fucus in Greece. Um, in Christianity, they have uh, Jesus or Yeshua, the, the Messiah, the Christ. Uh, in, in ancient Egypt, you can actually, the tradition, his name is Imhotep. He built the step pyramids of Saqqara. But it's the archetype of the wounded healer and, uh, and the mystic who's received enlightenment. Uh, Hinduism, oh gosh, okay, that one just slipped my mind. Buddhism, Buddha sat under the tree for three days and then received enlightenment. Uh, there's, uh, you look at the different traditions, religious traditions and spiritual traditions throughout the world. Nordic myths, uh, Thor hung from a tree for three days and was enlightened. You can look at the different traditions, you'll find that wounded archetype. I believe it's Quetzalcoatl. And I think, is, is it the, is, I'm going to mess it up. It's either Mayan or Aztec. I think it's Aztec. 
Um, yeah. Healer, the archetype of a wounded healer, a person who's wounded, learned how to heal their wounds and then heals people with similar wounds. So, and that's that's the missing sign that was uh, removed. And you know, I think if people can heal themselves, kind of hard to control people who aren't hurting. Um, but it's yeah, it's where you where it's, you look at that chart, and that tells you where you're wounded. And when when you heal that, you can heal others who have similar wounds and help them. So that's that's the missing thirteenth hmm. sign. Wow. That is amazing. Um, uh, so if someone wanted to contact you for a reading, what would they do? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can put the information in the description box. Yeah. yeah. If you want to contact me for a reading, you can, uh, on my website, it's freedomthroughastrology.com and through is spelled T-H-R-U because it really is all about you. I like making it personal. So freedom through astrology. Um, I can do live one-to-ones like you know, right over Zoom and we record it. You can download it. Uh, sometimes schedules don't match. That's fine. If you're on the services button or at the top, you'll see a thing that says services. Anything I do live one-to-one, -one, I do recordings. And so I can do a recording and then there's a follow-up that goes with that, a short follow-up where you can say, hey, you mentioned this. Can you talk more about her and ask? And we can get together for a short follow-up where you, where you can get clarifications. So I can do live one-to-ones. I do recordings. Um, I have a subscribe button that's for a weekly newsletter that I put out. And you, um, most of the time I have the YouTube re uh, forecast ready and you can go on the U and you right on the website and you click and it takes you right to, um, or right on the newsletter, it takes you right to the YouTube channel and you can watch the weekly forecast. This week's wound up being a little long because there was so much that went from last week to cover that carried over into this week. But yeah, if you go to my website, you can, um, you can schedule me right through there if you've got questions. My email is on there. It's dtptak at freedomthroughastrology.com. Um, you can ask me questions. I'm more than happy to answer them. Gemini Ascendant with Mercury and Gemini. Yeah, I'm going to carry on. <laughs> That's my shadow. <laughs> I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I'm getting better. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for coming on my show. I'd love to have you again to talk all about sure. more. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. fascinating. I'm more than happy to step back on. I think what you're doing is great because it looks, and from what I've seen on your website and on your YouTube channel, you're kind of that librarian in here. Like, hey, if you have a question about this, this is the person you go to. You got a question about this? This is the person you go to. You're kind of that master connector. And that's kind of the role I see you playing in your chart is being that master you know, and looking at that. And just off, like I said, off my top of my head, when I was looking at it, I was like, yeah, I can see you being that person that you, if I need help with, go ask Crystal because she can help you find who it is or she'll know who the person or know who to talk to to help you find the person. That's really, I, I'm seeing that in your chart. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And I just love that you were a librarian. Like there's so much, <laughs> we need to talk off camera, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm okay. In that Neville Goddard book that you mentioned, I was like, I want to read. I was like, okay, astrology in the Bible. Cause I, there's more questions I have about that. And I would love to know if somebody knows a book about that. Yeah. Me librarian book. Read yeah. it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> On for another topic. Another day. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Crystal. I really appreciate this opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Have a great day. Have a great week.